Got a goal and you just can't hit it? Well, fill up here and we'll help you get it. Learn the Goal Achievement Success System here on Goal Getting Podcast and put some gas in your goals to power you to the finish line. Learn how to use gas in your goals with your guide, Tony Woodall, as he provides tips, strategies, and inspiration with quote and advice from experts to help you get the goals you set. Let's go, friends. Rev up your engines and let's take off for success. Hey, 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 and welcome back to Goal Getting Podcast. Hey, this is Tony, and I am so glad that you came back to join us today. If you're a longtime listener, thank you very much for staying around with us. I hope that we are going to provide you the value that you need for whatever your journey, your goal is this year. I am working on wellness, and we're going to be talking about the Goal Achievement Success System and your goals, your dreams, your purpose. We are going to talk about that and how to achieve those goals and how to help you get the goals you set. Today we have a quote that I want to talk about that's from Albert Einstein. This is a very important quote, something very important and necessary to think about because it's about thinking. Albert Einstein says, the world as we created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. That's a great quote. That's a great truth that Albert Einstein has shared with us. Thoughts become things. We are who we become because of what we think. The only way to change who or what we are is to change our thinking. One of my favorite websites is tut.com, and their motto is, Thoughts Become Things. Choose the good ones. This is very true. You know, we are what we think. We are what we say we are. Negative self-talk is negative programming into our subconscious mind. When we are thinking about things, we should always be thinking positive, success-oriented thoughts. You have a choice over your thoughts, my friend. You control who you are by the thoughts you think. So choose the good ones. Go check out tut.com and register with them, and they will send you positive, good thoughts in your inbox every day. And it is an amazing service that they provide. It really keeps you inspired and motivated. So check them out. Well, today we're going to be starting to talk about our work on wellness journey, or at least my work on wellness journey. If you have a similar journey that you're working on your wellness, you want to change some of the things that you are today, we have to change our thinking. We have to change how we think about our goals, how we think about what we're doing. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So as we work on wellness, and remember I'm using the hashtag work on wellness, that's the hashtag or pound sign work on wellness in a lot of my tweets, my Facebook posts, you know, LinkedIn, everywhere that I'm on social media, I'm going to be using that on this journey. So you can use that to search and follow on the uh, social media if you want to do that. You can use it yourself and we'll check each other out. I'll be searching for others that are using work on wellness, the hashtag work on wellness. And if I see it, I'll mention it on the show. So let's work together to do this. We're going to change our mind's thoughts on what we want. We are going to talk about our goals for wellness. Now, if you have a copy of the goal-getting worksheets I mentioned in our previous episode, I want you to follow along. Now, if you need them, don't have them yet, go to goalgettingpodcast.com forward slash action and pick them up. You can go ahead and pause the show right now, go get them, and then when you come back, we'll be ready to get started. Okay, I'm sure you've got them now, so you should have your worksheets. Let's look at the top of the page. As you see, we have this in three sections, and these are the three keys to goal-setting success. This goal achievement success system tool that I designed is designed to help you define the what, the how, and the why for each major goal you will set. Today, we're going to focus on the what. What do you want to achieve? Did you set New Year's resolutions? Well, how's that working out for you? Do you realize that at the end of February, most people have already started to forget or quit their New Year's resolutions? Why? Because they didn't set them as goals. They just said they resolved to change or do something. 
as we get into the three keys to goal setting success, you're going to start to understand why New Year's resolutions don't work. They just don't. We're going to be talking about defining the what, what you want to achieve, and that requires the following steps from the nine steps to successful goal achievement. Those three steps are write it down, be realistic, and set a deadline. Now, the nine steps to successful goal achievement is my ebook. You can get it on Amazon.com. I'll have a link on our show notes page if you want to go and get it. Uh, you can click on the link or you can just go to Amazon.com and search Tony Woodall, nine steps to successful goal achievement. It'll come up right now. It's 99 cents. If you go purchase it now, it uh, will be less than a buck and it will help you out with understanding the nine steps to successful goal achievement and how they work. And we get into a little more detail there. You can also get our nine steps poster by going to goalgettingpodcast.com forward slash poster, P-O-S-T-E-R, and downloading that and putting that on your wall. I have a copy on my office wall so that I can remember when I'm setting business goals or personal goals, what I need to do, what steps I need to have in my goals when I set them. So we're going to cover right now the what. And the first thing that we want to do is write it down. Napoleon Hill the author of Think and Grow Rich, explained in his book that the most successful people of his time had clearly defined written goals. Most people don't even write their goals down. Less than 5% of people in the world write down their goals. And of them, only 1% of them do them specifically. So we want to make sure that they're clearly defined. And that's part of the reason why New Year's resolutions don't work. Most New Year's resolutions are not written down. Most New Year's resolutions are not clearly defined. What was your New Year's resolution? I can't even say it these days because I don't believe in them. But what was your New Year's resolution? Was it to lose weight? Was it to live a healthier lifestyle? Was it to get a new job? Well, those are all resolutions, but they're not written down, if you say it that way, if you just say it, and they're not specific, and that's why they don't work. When we write our goals down, when we define the what, we want to use clearly defined speech. We want to be specific about what we want. I like to say specific is terrific. You will see that in the upper right-hand corner of the worksheets. And did you know that specific, by the way, is the S in the SMART goals? So that is definitely one of the main keys and one of the main characteristics you have to have of your goals, and that is to be specific. The next step is be realistic. Hey, big, hairy, audacious goals are important, and I believe you have to really set and dream big. You can do anything that you set your mind to, within reason. So we want to be realistic. Now I say within reason, I want you to have big dreams. I want you to have big goals. I do. You want to stretch yourself. You need to make sure that your goals are hard to achieve, that they're out of your comfort zone, that there's something that you have to stretch to achieve. But you don't want to make unrealistic goals either. And realistic is usually a time constraint or an ability constraint. If you set a goal to graduate from college in one year, that is probably unrealistic for most people, especially if you haven't started yet. Graduating from college is an achievable goal. It is an attainable goal. Graduating in one year without ever having started any courses is probably not likely. Again, that's not necessarily out of the question, but the odds of it happening are very unrealistic. So your goals have to be achievable. Be realistic is the A in SMART goals. Okay, well, it's obviously obviously an R, but to me, realistic and attainable, which is what the A actually is in these SMART goals, is essentially the same thing. If they aren't attainable, then it's usually unrealistic to assume you can't achieve them. If the time frame you set to achieve them isn't a realistic time frame, then they would be unattainable. And this is why I only have be realistic as one of the nine steps. In SMART goals, the A is attainable. It has to be attainable, and it has to be R or realistic. So that's AR. So you got SAR that we've already talked about in the SMART goals. But, you know, don't let your SMART goals make you dumb. You have to still be realistic, and you have to have attainable goals. But they're, that's kind of the same in my book. What we want to talk about now is the third step that we have to have in the what, and that is set a deadline. A dream without a deadline is only a wish. 
And that is the T in SMART goals. Okay. S, D, set a deadline. Okay, it's not a T, but it's timely, time-bound. That is what the T stands for in SMART, and that's what we're talking about. You have to set a deadline, and it must have a defined time when you're going to achieve your goal. Creating a deadline puts a sense of urgency on us. It puts a finite end to what we are trying to accomplish. And without a deadline, there's no hurry to achieve it. You will get around to it whenever you want to. That's not a goal, folks. That's a wish. So set a deadline, a specific ending for what you want to accomplish. All right. So let's get started writing. Yes. Take out your goal setting worksheet and a pen. And yes, I said a pen and I did say started writing. You didn't think you were going to type it into the spreadsheet, did you? I mean, it's not what we're going to do. We're going to be using handwriting. We want to handwrite our goals on the worksheet. Yes, it's old school, but this is why we want it to work. We want to handwrite them in cursive also in longhand. What you're saying? You don't know how to do that. Well, you probably do if you're listening to the show, but I do know that I've heard at least that they are going to stop teaching cursive handwriting longhand in schools. I think that is a bad mistake. I think just because we use devices, tablets, smartphones and things to type things on and communicate, we have computers, we don't do a lot of handwriting, doesn't mean it shouldn't be taught. So I am definitely against that decision. If you don't like that, uh, you can let me know why in the comment section. But we use cursive in the goal achievement success system because the process of handwriting doesn't take conscious thought, at least not as an adult. And most kids don't have to either after they learned how to use cursive and write in longhand. And the process of handwriting uses the autonomic nervous system, much like riding a bicycle. Once you're, once you're learning that or once you've learned that, your body is conditioned to do that. The subconscious mind controls the process, just like breathing. You don't have to think about breathing. You just do. And when you're using cursive handwriting, you don't usually think about how you're writing it. You just start writing. Now, part of that is half time. You can't understand what you read, wrote after that. You try to read it. You can't understand it, but that doesn't matter. That's not the point of this exercise. The point is to handwrite it because we want that signal, that words, that thought process to go directly into your subconscious mind. And the best way to do that is to use cursive handwriting. So take out your sheets, grab your pen, and let's work on this. In the what box, let's start writing down what we want to achieve, being very careful to use all of the steps. So let's look at an example of what I want to achieve for my primary goal. In my goal setting worksheet that I have on my wall in my office that I'm looking at right now, it says I want to reduce my A1C numbers to below 6.0 by July 1st, 2016. That's the time frame that I set for that particular goal. I will achieve my goal weight of 185 pounds by December 20th of 2016. I will have a 34-inch waist by this time and be able to see my abdominal muscles without all of the fat. That's my goal. That's part of my work on wellness. I don't just want to lose the weight. I want to be healthy. I want to be more well. I want to lose the weight because that's going to help me get my A1C down. It's a requirement, I think, from what my doctors tell me to get my A1C down. I also want to have a 34-inch waist, and I think that is kind of along the same lines of being 185 pounds. Once I achieve that goal, I'll have a 34-inch waist, and possibly even before that, when I got down to my weight of 210 pounds, which was my goal when I lost weight from uh, you know, the biggest loser competition we had at work a couple of years ago where I lost 40 pounds in 16 weeks. I had actually gone down to a 38 inch waist and actually very close to a 36. So I do believe that once I get to 185, I will achieve that goal of a 34 inch waist and also be able to see my abdominal muscles, which I haven't really seen a lot in a while. That is the what for my primary goal, and it is realistic. It is attainable. A deadline has been set for the weight loss that is realistic. A deadline has been set for the lowering of my A1C. I know it's realistic. I know both of these deadlines and the wellness goals I set are realistic because I have lost 40 pounds in 16 weeks. When I did that, I had lowered my A1C to below 6.0. I know it's possible. It will be a stretch, but I know it's achievable. If I do what I need to do to achieve it, 
and that's the how, and we'll be talking about that the how in the next episode, then I will be able to achieve that. So what is your what? What do you want to achieve? What I would love for you to do is to go to our show notes page at goalgettingpodcast.com forward slash S2E2. Write down in the comment section what your what is. Tell me what your what is. Or if you want to be more private, you can send an email to me at Tony at GoalGettingPodcast.com. Tell me what your what is. What did you write down on your goal setting worksheet? I love to help people and follow up and, you know, counsel and make sure that we're holding each other accountable. You just heard what my what is. I am going to be doing that. I'll be reporting back in episodes going forward. I have been going to the gym since the beginning of the year and started my working out more to do that. So I'm in the process already of this goal, trying to achieve it. I've started eating better. I had salad for lunch today, and I had a very light breakfast. And we'll talk about in the next episode what the how is for me to achieve this. What do I have to do to do this? And we'll talk about how I went about losing 40 pounds in 16 weeks. It was a stretch for me to do that. I wasn't trying to lose a specific amount of weight. I ended up losing 40 pounds because I had 16 weeks to win this competition and whoever lost the most weight. But I did set a goal of trying to lose 40 pounds to get down. I wanted to get down to 210 pounds. And that was my goal in this competition because I figured once I did, if I could do that, I would probably beat my other contestants. Unfortunately, I lost that competition by 0.3% uh, <laughs> of weight loss. The other person did some hot yoga for the week before that and didn't eat but 300 calories, which is not healthy. And we are not going to do that. I want you to be healthy. So check with your doctor, make sure they're aware of what you're doing if you're doing a fitness goal, but understand or a wellness goal, but understand the steps that we're talking about today, the what and how to set and write the what for your goals is not set only for wellness or fitness or you know, losing weight or anything. That is how it works for any goal that you have. You have to follow the same process. And that's the good thing. You can keep along with us. If the wellness journey is not your journey, if you have a different journey you're on right now, you can use this entire, this entire process for those goals. And if that is, you know, your what, let me know what that is. If you're working on something besides a wellness goal, let me know what that is in our show notes page or on the email. So follow along on my journey on hashtag work on wellness. I look forward to seeing you back next episode on Goal Getting Podcast. Thank you very much for listening. This is your host, Tony Woodall. I want to tell you to just go out today and remember, thoughts become things. Choose the good ones. Go visit tut.com, sign up, and they'll send you some great thoughts in your inbox, and it'll really help inspire you. But also listen to our show uh, you can get it on SoundCloud. You can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Stitcher. Soon, those of you on Android will be able to get it on Google Music Play. Uh, I just signed up for that. It's been posted and approved. And when they start doing podcasts on there, you should be able to get it. You may get it now, so go check if you're an Android user. But thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate you coming back You know, every time we do an episode, downloading those and listening to our show. Keep in touch with me. You know, we've got the ability to do communications between each other on our comments page. You can email me. I'm here to help you get the goals you set. And let's go out and make today a great day.